Let us recall that the specific heat of a substance is simply the quantity of energy that is required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of that substance by one degree Celsius. Now, for solids and liquids, the specific heat values changes only very slightly with changes in pressure and volume. So that means for solids and liquids, the specific heat does does not depend on the type of process that our solid or liquid is undergoing. The specific heat only depends on the type of substance that we're using. However, for gases, the specific heat does in fact depend on the change in volume and pressure. So it does depend on the type of process that we're using. Now before we look at the difference in the values of the specific heat for different gases undergoing different processes, let's define the molar specific heat. The molar specific heat of a substance is simply the quantity of energy that is required to raise the temperature of one mole of that substance by one degree Celsius. And the relationship between the amount of energy and the change in temperature is given by this quantity, this equation. The Q, the amount of energy transferred, is equal to the product of N, the number of moles, multiplied by capital C, the molar specific heat, multiplied by change in temperature. Now, we just said that for gases, the specific heat depends on the type of process. So what that basically means, if we have two different processes for the same gas undergoing the same change in temperature, the C values, the molar specific heat values, will be different. So for example, let's suppose we have an isobaric process. In an isobaric process, our molar specific heat is given by the following variable. So Cp is the molar specific heat for our process in which there is constant pressure. And let's suppose we have an isovolumetric process. In an isovolumetric process, the volume remains constant. So that means our value for molar specific heat given by Cv will be different than this value Cp. So Cv is the molar specific heat for an isovolumetric process in which the volume remains constant. So if the number of moles is the same and the change in temperature is the same, that means whichever one of these quantities is greater, that implies that the amount of energy that is transferred is also greater. For example, if Cp is greater than Cv, Qp will be greater than Qv. And likewise, if Cv is greater than Cp, then that implies that the amount of energy transferred in the isovolumetric process will be greater than the amount of energy transferred in the isobaric process. Process. So let's actually explore this question. Let's compare the values of Cp and Cv and let's try to determine which one of these values is greater. So let's begin by assuming that we begin with the same ideal gas. So the same ideal gas is heated under two different processes. In both of these processes, the temperature increases by the same exact quantity, by the same exact amount. So let's begin with the isovolumetric process and let's try to determine the amount of work done by our ideal gaseous system in an isovolumetric process. So in an isovolumetric process, the change in volume is zero. So we begin with the work is equal to the integral of dw, the infinitely small change in work, from position one, from uh, initial conditions to position two to final conditions. And this is the same as this quantity. Now, because 
our dv because our change in volume is zero our infinitely small change in volume is also zero so basically because this quantity is zero this entire work becomes zero so in an isobolometric process the work done by our ideal gaseous system is equal to zero now Recall that the first law of thermodynamics states that the change in internal energy of our ideal gaseous system is equal to the sum of the work and our uh, change in energy due to heat. So because our work is zero, that implies this quantity is zero. So our change in internal energy of our system is simply equal to the amount of energy transferred as a result of a difference in temperature. And the V simply means that we're dealing with an isovolumetric process. So let's call this equation, equation I. And let's move on to the isobaric process. In an isobaric process, we have change in pressure is equal to zero because the pressure is assumed to be constant. So, we begin with the same exact formula. The work done in an isobaric process by our gaseous system is equal to the integral of dw from 1 to 2. This is the same thing as the integral of the product of p and dv from v1 volume 1 to v2 volume 2. Now because the pressure is a constant that means that we can take that out and integrate and we get the following result. The pressure multiplied by v2 minus v1 or equivalently pressure times change in volume. So in an isobaric process, the change in internal energy is equal to QP minus W and W is this quantity. So minus P multiplied by change in volume. So we can rearrange this equation and solve for QP and we see that QP, the amount of energy transferred as a result of a difference in temperature between the surroundings and the gaseous system in an isobaric process, QP is equal to the sum of the change in internal energy of our system plus P multiplied by change in V. And let's call this equation 2I. Now, because we're dealing with an ideal gaseous system, an ideal monatomic gaseous system, the change in internal energy is equal to 3 times n times r times change in t divided by 2. Now, notice because we assume that in both processes the temperature increases by the same exact amount, the change in temperature is the same for both cases. And that means for both processes, the change in internal energy is also the same. So, that means we can take equation I and plug equation I into equation 2I. So we can replace the change in internal energy with simply QV. So we get QP is equal to QV plus P multiplied by change in V. So that basically means if we rearrange this equation, we get the following result. QP minus QV is equal to P multiplied by change in volume. Now recall the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law tells us that a product of the pressure and the volume is equal to n times r times t where n is the number of moles and t is the temperature. Now because in the isobaric process we have constant pressure that means we can have we can take this equation and get the following result the change in volume in an isobaric process is equal to the product of n r divided by p where n r divided by p is a constant multiplied by change in temperature so in an isobaric process the change in volume depends on the change in temperature. So we basically, 
we take this entire equation and plug it in for the change in volume. So we take this and plug it in for this quantity and we get that QP minus QV is equal to the pressure multiplied by N times R times change in T divided by P. Now notice the P's appear on top and bottom so we can cancel those out. And now let's replace the QP and QV with the following equations. So we get the following result. N times our molar specific heat for constant volume times the change in temperature minus the number of moles N multiplied by CP multiplied by change in T is equal to N times R times change in T. Notice the N's will cancel and the change in T's will cancel and we're left with the following result. CP minus CV is equal to R, the universal gas constant. Because R is a constant and it's a positive constant, that means that CP is greater than CV. So we see that our CP is greater than CV, so that means there's more energy that is transferred as a result of the change in temperature in an isobaric process than in an isovolumetric process. So once again, if we have the same ideal gas system undergoing two different processes, we see that there is more energy transferred in the isobaric process than in an isovolumetric process for the same change in temperature.